Okay, welcome to my uh, video tutorial on building a helicopter, or at least the techniques that I used here. Uh, as you can see, I've gone ahead and built this one. It's just a, it's like a dual rotor variety from Avatar or Halo or something like that. Um, and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take you guys through the, uh, the process of doing some of the more difficult techniques or the things that took me the longest to figure out. Uh, and I'm not going to do this step by step because that would take a lot longer than the 15 minutes I have in this YouTube video and I don't want to end up posting like 30 different videos. If you do want a step by step to build something like this, uh, there's a great tutorial over at blendercookie.org by Jonathan Williamson uh, and he makes a model that's a lot uh, more detailed than this and really really pretty. Uh, it is about 50 bucks I think for the series but it's worth every penny in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, let me just give you a quick look at the final model here. Render this. Uh, let me try rendering it with lights. Okay, so I haven't textured it or anything, but it's not bad looking. So we're going to go over some of the techniques using this, so grab yourself a soda or whatever and let's get started. Okay, so what I want to show you guys really quick is how to do a wing, and wings are actually really simple. You just start with a cube, and you scale it. Uh, to the rough shape that you're looking for. We'll just do a basic aircraft wing here. Uh, and of course, if you look on the internet or at a plane in real life, you'll notice they're not actually rectangular from the side because you have that whole Bernoulli's principle thing. So what you do is just add in some loop cuts. A few of them. Uh, depending on how many polygons you want to use, you can obviously get pretty carried away here and I don't think that's exactly right but yeah a little better but yeah there's plenty of reference photos it's not hard so there's that aspect the next thing you need to do is just go up here scale that down a little bit maybe pull it back and I guess that's good since we're not trying to make any particular wing uh, of course, the next thing you'll notice here is that it's still solid, so go ahead and click Smooth. And of course, as soon as you do that, you see we have some issues down here. Um, and that's not really good. Now, there's a couple ways you can solve this. Uh, if you want kind of a low-poly model, then the easiest thing to do is just go in here, pick those edges around here, and these edges here. You'll, you can do this if you're making like a, a video game or something else where you can't afford to have a lot of geometry and then you go control E you mark that as sharp then you add a modifier edge split and you deselect the from edge angle and so there you go there's your wing and you have a grand total of uh... Oops, can't quite see it here 18 yeah okay so a grand total of 18 faces which is pretty decent and of course if you didn't care about the Bernoulli thing you could probably get away with four faces anyway so that's that now the other thing is if you can afford a little more geometry and you want a better look then we'll get rid of the edge split and we'll clear all the sharp edges um, you just go ahead and you add a subsurf modifier I put two levels of subsurfing on here and then you can go in here and put edge loops in not quite to the edge, just sort of approaching the edge and that'll just help you really define the geometry a little bit and there and we'll do one more here okay and that looks a little better, in fact it looks a lot better because you end up with these nice kind of uh, lines on the end because you know nothing's a perfect corner in the real world. So uh, that's pretty much the basic concept for a wing. Now if you're making a sci-fi vehicle or some crazy aircraft you can always you know add curves to the wing or do whatever you want. If you want kind of a a weird kind of an arc or something like that, a real easy technique for that is to just go here, turn your proportional editing on well, first let me put a couple more edge loops in here. Okay, pro 
proportional editing on and you just kind of drag it back like that until you get the shape that you're looking for and of course I put in those edge loops without modifying them on the Z axis so that's why that's looking a little funky turn that off alright so well I wasn't uh, that doesn't look too good but you get the idea so you can just kind of modify that to get the shape that you're looking for in the wing okay so that's basically all there is to making a wing okay so the next thing I want to do is uh, hull panels and lines and you'll notice in any kind of large vehicle like an aircraft or a spaceship or anything like that uh, the vehicle is made up of a lot of different little panels instead of one big sheet of metal because that would be kind of impractical so uh, when I first got started modeling I ran into a problem when I wanted to have a subsurf model that had panels coming out of it because as you can see with this wing here let's say I want this to be a panel kind of sticking up off the body I extrude it on the Z axis and I just get this kind of lump which that's not good at all and if I follow the same technique I used making the wing and I just kind of add some loop cuts in here to help define it I have to add a bunch of them first of all if I got subsurf on right and now that looks decent there but now look what I just went and did to my whole wing I mean these extra loop cuts that I put in here give sharp edges everywhere and I really don't want that so what I ended up doing, as simple as this sounds, if I want a panel here, or even let's say I want a panel that kind of curves forward a little bit, all you do is you duplicate this, Shift D, and you kind of move it up to where you want the top of the panel, and maybe a little bit forward. Okay, scale it down to the size you want, and you just extrude it down in like that so it, it doesn't look good now but then you can go ahead and add all the loop cuts that you want because the, this piece is actually separate from the main model and depending on how you want your panel to look you could leave it like that now in this case there's a little bit of a curve here I see that I kinda missed so just go ahead and add that in there uh, just a little bit right and if you want it to be a little more definition throw an edge loop on the bottom bring it up to the top right so I kinda should have really played with that geometry a little more but you get the idea so that's pretty much how you do panels uh, and it, it seems like bad modeling technique because you're always supposed to have your vertices connected but really I found it's the most efficient way to, to do things sometimes and then <clears throat> another thing you can do is if you want to just do like a line on here well you could texture it that way with a normal map but all you do is you just throw in a couple of edge loops wherever you want your your line at so say here and you just select that whole ring of faces and you just extrude it and you scale it in like that and then you just bring another edge loop basically right to the very tip like that and you kinda have a line there in your wing uh, another cool thing you can do is you can go to let's pick one of these edges here just hit the V button and then don't move it just leave it there V like that because you've just kinda cut this model here so these vertices are no longer connected so then you have the option of doing something like going in here creating another edge loop say on this part and when you get done you've kind of broken it down like that see so this loop cut didn't run the whole length of the wing just to that part right there which is actually pretty realistic if you look at how a lot of these vehicles are built so I don't think this is in good camera view. Yeah, these are way over here. So 
so you can see that we've got you know that here and this here and of course you'd probably want to add better lighting and textures and you know build an airplane to connect it to but uh, other than that that's basically how you Okay, so just one more thing I'd like to show you guys how to do really quick. Uh, here's my actual helicopter model. Is these vents that I have in here. And this is kind of an unusual shape, so what I'd like to do, let me turn off the subsurfing first of all, is just kind of show you guys a technique for this. When you have a weird uh, vent opening here, there's a real quick technique you can use to make some, some decent fins, or air vents, I guess. Just going to pull this off separate it and we'll just move it to another layer okay so it, it's kinda hard if you try to make these manually by putting cubes in here and adjusting them and tweaking them to get them to match this opening so uh, oops. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is actually get rid of these so I want to start with a line Let's see what we got okay that should be good so first I just need to do oops, a little bit of cleanup here okay that's good so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to make this uh, as close to a cube as possible without changing uh, the shape of it. Okay. And I think in this case we're actually just going to have to go ahead and uh, cut this. Oops. Right here. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is just make these into solid faces. And again, I've duplicated this. I haven't taken the original part. <clears throat> Oops, it looks like I still got that mirror modifier on there. Uh, and then all you can do... Um, what did I do wrong? Center new. Okay. Okay, and then what you do is you just c add some loop cuts in here. Depending on how many fins you want. And just be careful when you're cutting them. You'll cut this one a different number of times than that one. Uh, depending on the model. In fact, I think maybe one's better there. Okay. And all you do is you just take every other one and you delete them and then you just extrude everything like that and we'll make that one solid okay and then you can take of course you can take the faces and bevel them okay you probably wouldn't need to bevel all of them all the edges but in this case it'll be okay see so there you go and then when you take that one back to the original model you stick it in there I still have my other one in there so it's kinda confusing but you can see it fits nice and tight in that space so that's a quick way to make some fins okay so that's basically some of the techniques that I've used in there uh, if there's enough interest I can do some more um, but in the meantime that should get you guys started and if you have any questions or you want a copy of this model uh, feel free to shoot me a message.